think when you find yourself in an environment where things are challenging, things are difficult, that's the time that everybody else wants to give up. And to me, the quality, the DNA of an entrepreneur is people who believe in themselves. You know, when I started out my journey at the age of 16, you know, I was one of those classic entrepreneurs with no money, no, no backup, no capital, starting a tiny broom cupboard in Pall Mall, an office that had no windows, but I had an idea that I passionately believed in something that I believed that could have made a difference. So to me, what makes this an amazing year for you is not the market, it's not the economy, I think it's your own belief, it's what you believe that you are capable of achieving. The media has been really hard all around the world, not just here in the UK, the United States and Canada and, and now Australia. So how do people overcome the fact that the media says, or their family or their friends, that this is the worst time to start or grow your business? And so, I mean, you buy and sell a lot of businesses and you turn them around and you've done it for a long time and you've been successful at almost all of them. So what do you say to that? Um, I mean, I think if you ever go by just what the media says and what other people say, remember, it's not other people that are building your business. Your business is your business. If you're looking for a reason to fail, you can find thousands of reasons. The question is, is the glass half full or is the glass half empty? You know, I remember when I was starting out, everybody said to me, you know, the market's no good. The, the, the business I was going to set up was a recruitment company. And they said, the change of thousands of recruitment businesses. You know, what are you going to do that's any different? Ultimately, did, did I invent the recruitment industry? No, I didn't. And, it, and a, a good example would be if you take Stelios, when Stelios launched EasyJet, you know, did he launch the travel industry? No. Did he invent the aeroplane? No. Did he invent travel? No. He had an idea that he passionately believed in. To me, the key driver in his business is he found a flaw in the costing model of the airline industry. So actually, he just found something he could do better, cheaper, and faster. So many entrepreneurs I meet constantly say to me, they're looking for that huge, big idea. But you know something? I find people who are really successful don't necessarily look at that great big idea. They look for something that already exists that you can do better, cheaper, and faster. And on the back of that, huge businesses have been created. So I think it's not about what other people say, it's about what you believe yourself. Three components of this. You have making the product, managing the product, and marketing the product. In order, which ones are most important and why? I always start with marketing the product. Now, let me give you an example. In Dragon's Den, I saw probably a thousand pictures of people coming up with amazing ideas. But one of the things that I learned, just literally being in that show for nearly four years, is some people come up with an idea and they spend ages and a huge amount of money developing the idea, developing the product, patenting the product, getting a prototype. So I'll give an example. I invested in it in a business called Motor Mouse, which was the concept of a, of a fast racing car that becomes essentially like a cordless mouse. When I backed those entrepreneurs, I said, guys, how long did it take for you to actually come up with a concept and develop it? Really 15 months, and they spent tens of thousands of pounds. I said, you know, it's really interesting. If I was going to do something like that, I literally would have gone to Toys R Us, I'd have a small matchbox car, I would have taken it to the supplier, and said, if I could deliver you with a mouse that becomes cordless, that you can use on a computer, is there something you could buy? I mean, something that simple, I could have reduced literally 18 months down to 18 minutes. I wouldn't have paid for it. I wouldn't have got a prototype. Because what happens if the client says, no, I wouldn't buy it. So to me, marketing is far more important. Every entrepreneur I meet, they spend all their time on the website, on the design, on logos, on business sites. They want to do everything other than talk to the customer. My advice to all of you, if you have a business, if you have an idea, everything else is a nice to have. Talking to somebody who's going to buy your product is, is critical. So I think if there's any advice I would give anybody, everything else literally put to one side, but take the proposition and take it to market. The only people who I really believe matter in business is your customers who are going to pay you. You are 
probably one of the world's top negotiators. You're this low-key guy. Oh, man. <laughs> and that's, and is that your approach? You tell them you're not good, and then <laughs> boom, it comes in. Because I've heard, even back in America, that you are very, very, very cheap. Uh, that you are a great negotiator, and you're a person who builds bridges of understanding and always gets the deal done. And how important is negotiation? And maybe explain some of your philosophy, maybe some examples of negotiation that you've done so that people here at Business 2012 can learn. I mean, it's clearly, I think negotiation in any business context is part of the journey of how you become successful. But I think the biggest lesson that I've learned that I've absolutely lived by in my business life on a daily basis is if you're going to become an entrepreneur and you're going to run a business, you're not doing it to have a good week or a good night. I'm hoping it's going to be a lifetime journey. Therefore, if you're negotiating, the question is, are you going to focus Businesses are built on relationships, not on transactions. And therefore, the art form of negotiation is to put yourself in the other person's position and say, what would be a fair deal to the other person as well as to me? So many guys I meet who are so obsessive when it comes to business and negotiation mm -hmm. because to me, they want to win. To me, the definition of winning means somebody loses. So my philosophy is if you can adopt a business practice that's based on win-win. So when the guy leaves, he thought to me, victory in a negotiation is when the other guy walks away feeling it was a great deal. So many times I've been in business. <laughs> you know, I've come out and I've come out with somebody and they say, yes, we got it. And I look at the other guy's face and he's completely deflated and he feels he's just been screwed. But I said, you know what? That actually wasn't a great deal. Because he won't do business with you again. Mm -hmm. To me, that's not the art of negotiating. That's the art of stealing. Because you nick the deal. Mm -hmm. So to me, I'd much rather, and, I, and I'll give an example. I was negotiating with somebody not so long ago, and we were pretty close to getting the deal. Well, I could see the guy, you know when somebody starts to move their collar, you know, they start moving out. You know that body language is he's sweating. Um, and I said, you know, if you had to look at this deal a year from now, and you and I met at a bar, and I said to you, what would that deal like you did with James Khan? What would you say? He said, too tough. I said, I appreciate your honesty. I said, which bit of the deal is making you really uncomfortable? He said, you know what? He said, you really squeeze me hard on payment terms. You're looking at 14 days payment between you and I, James. I'm not even sure I can do that. And I think, you know, it's really interesting. If I hadn't have asked the question, I'd have walked away, and, and actually the deal probably wouldn't have happened. I said, without trying to screw me, what do you think would be workable from your perspective? He said, if you can give me 30 days, just give me 30 days payment, at least I know I can deliver the service and get paid within the time period that allows me to make a margin. I said, you know what, I'm happy with 30 days, because actually it wasn't going to make a huge difference. But that, to me, is win-win. Where now, then, as we were leaving, we were walking up to the lift, I said, just before I go, if I ask you the same question now, a year from now, and I said to you now, if you look back, what was that deal like? You'd say, you know what? I would say you were firm, but you were fair. So and to me, that's probably a much better balance. You know, I want to be firm because, you know, I don't want to be a walkover because I've got to run a business. But the most important thing is I think you have to be fair because, to me, that relationship means I can go back and we'll do business again.